Gerald finally gets his Thailand apology. Pateri gives Bree an ultimatum. And Miami has to check a fool. What's good, y'all? She goes to Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Sweet Life LA video. In this video, we are breaking down season two, episode number nine. Have we really, though? Have we? I think that's something like the name. Child, they pulled that as a quote from AQ, and we're going to get into that. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my Sweet Life videos. And without further ado, we're going to just jump right on into it. And I'm going to have to start at the end, y'all, because I just really love Pateri so much. I love Pateri for Brie so much. And I feel like we're being set up for her to just turn him down because she can't do the distance and all of that and it's breaking my damn heart out of everything that happened in the episode when we arrived at the last two minutes and we're watching them have this conversation and it's the body language for me like watching Pateri adjust how he's seated watching him not break eye contact and wipe her tears and just truly be intentionally listening not only to her words but to her eyes to her vibe to her body language I'm like that's a black king right there. And y'all gonna have to deal. If you over me gushing over Pateri and how dope he is, I'm going to always celebrate bomb ass manifestations of black men out and about in the world. So that y'all had a positive reinforcement to know that this is how you go out and, and you handle yourself. No, you don't gotta just be a Pateri like carbon copy but be a stand-up guy be emotionally available emotionally intelligent self-aware take pride in like how you carry yourself and most of all in pursuing romantic relationships with women be there to support protect listen and uplift he just be checking all the damn boxes so again it's pateri for me it is pateri and brianna for me and she has this moment as they're talking where she starts to kind of cry and I'm like looking and, and I'm like wondering if this has something to do with the editing because she starts to cry because she's basically describing being overstimulated and being around so many people for so long and he mentioned like yeah I noticed your social battery started to die and I'm not trying to you know be obtrusive into your space and I'm trying to give you space which is another thing like it's the adjustment for me. He ain't getting no attitude. He ain't take personally. He like is asking, clarifying questions like, okay, it's not me that you're bothered by, but like what the whole setup of what's going on and you just need to recharge your battery. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We love that. And the conversation kind of goes from there to them having a conversation about taking the next step. And I believe getting into an exclusive relationship. And from what it looks like, even though it's not said outright, it looks like Pateri wants to be in, in a, a committed relationship with Brianna and he wants an answer. And she is stuttering and, and shuffling and delaying and actually giving him one. And if she don't get into a relationship with um, Pateri in the next episode, y'all, then I think that Brie really does just want to be single because for all intents and purposes from what we see, like we don't actually know all of the truth, which cool, got it. We don't know Pateri aside from what we see on the screen. He seems like a really dope guy that she should definitely give a chance to and see herself in a relationship with. And also not even just because he's a great guy, she should get in a relationship with him, but it does seem like she's attracted to him, like really, really attracted to him. Now, part of me and watching Brianna in this scene feels like there's some self-sabotage that's kicking in. There's some self-esteem things that are kicking in. Um, and if she turns him down or says that she doesn't want to do this, part of me feels like she don't feel like she's on his level or she don't feel like she could actually uphold her side of that relationship, which would make sense. You know, like I said, I've been saying that Pateri seems like a guy who like really has it together. And Brianna has been spending a lot of time trying to figure it all out, trying to navigate life and make a name for herself and just do certain things. And maybe at this point in time, relationships that she get into are less about deep connection and building for the future and more about how she can connect with people physically and 
I mean, if that's her choice, then that would be a reason why she's, you know, going to turn Pateri down in this way. I think that the distance is going to be a huge thing, even though I feel like long distance can damn work. Planes go both damn ways. And in this day and age, in 2022, with the pee and poop that is in the dating pool, if I come across a bomb ass black dude that's giving me everything that I need and showing potential in reference to future growth and partnership and development within our lives and relationship. You think my ass won't be on a plane every other weekend? Yes, the hell I will. You think I won't be on FaceTime every single night, every single morning, whenever the hell? Yes, the hell I will. You think I'm going to be popping up and rent? I don't give a damn if it's New York, Dubai, South Africa, Australia. My ass will be on a plane. Okay, be clear. But I can say that being in a place in my life where I am looking for actual life partnerships, someone who I will be able to build a family and further legacy with and just establish something that's going to stand the test of time. Brianna is in her mid 20s, beautiful, living in LA, really, you know, learning herself and also learning to love herself better. And she could simply be looking for as many experiences as possible, as much physical interaction as possible. So in that case, he maybe is not going to be able to give her what she's looking for in reference to she's not looking for something stable and steady. I don't know if it's actually clear for me in this moment and it will become more clear if she turns him down. But then even after that, I would love to hear the confessional and the clarification that she's going to give. But it looks like her ass is going to say no by the end of this episode. And they cut it at the very perfect moment to like leave us on a cliffhanger of like, will they, won't they? But what I will say is, Pateria, you have done your damn job up until this point. You have done all that you can do. And if she don't choose you, it's not you, sir. Just know that. I think this was my favorite moment of the entire episode and it was literally the last two minutes and it's crazy. Um, but I really, 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 really enjoyed their exchange in this moment. Um, now, let's go to what I did not like, like the literal polar opposite. And part of me like really wants to ride for Miami because black women, period. And I always will have black women's backs. Um, I do think that she hit below the belt in questioning his manhood and ultimately like implying certain things about his sexuality. I don't feel like um, when we're in argument or disagreement with somebody, we should ever go to a place of like using someone's sexuality or where they appear on the gender spectrum as a dig or as an insult. Like that ultimately becomes an insult or you're basically trying to make that an insult for an entire community and it and it's it's tacky honestly like talking about aq isn't a real man because of x y and z like is he not a real man or is he just not the man for you like let's pick our words better because i hate that like yes he has this little see-through lingerie ass top on these pearls and whatever the hell else he got going on he's showing up a little bit differently than what most um typical like masculine presenting males would do but like let's not try to backdoor out him even if he is queer or bisexual or whatever the hell he got going on that's his business and if he didn't leave with that that's not for you to try to pull out in the, in the course of an argument to make him feel less than based on some bullshit as you know gender and sexuality like girl i believe that you're better than that you should do better than that um, so I definitely want to be honest and, and, and hold her accountable for that tacky ass conversation that she had. But I am, again, on her side because what I won't do is deal with men, specifically back, black men, belittling women as if we aren't y'all's equals. We don't deserve respect and fucking using terms like this broad and basically he he just was hitting way below the belt and all the things that he was saying and it was giving very much so misogyny it's giving very much so you're still trying to figure out who the hell you are and where you fall with this whole spectrum and where you fall within your gender which is perfectly fine sir it's your life your journey you do what you got to do in your own damn time you're what you're not going to do is quantify my feminine 
manifestation based off of your PZS thoughts and PS brain and goofy ass perspective because you feel rejected. Like y'all two weren't even really into each other. It seemed like you stopped having interest in uh, Miami when she said that she was celibate. So like, let's not act like our damn feelings are hurt because she betrayed you by getting into the damn hot tub with your homeboy when you actually didn't like her the moment you found out you wasn't going to be able to smash. And then now all of a sudden you're not attracted to her. Now all of a sudden she dis that and the third. Like, like, that's some goofy ass sh and I don't like it. Like, to me, if I'm going to say anything isn't a real man, like, be a man and stand on certain principles of, in reference to how you will not talk to women, what you will and won't say to women, what you will and won't do, regardless of how intense y'all get in this argument. Like, I feel like there needs to be some standards about you. Like, one of the things that I will never do, and I know you're not supposed to never say never, and I pray to God that, like, I just don't see myself doing it. How about that? I don't see myself ever using anybody's sexuality or gender representation as darts within a damn argument to try to get back and do some kind of low blows. And I feel like men should have the same thing when it comes to women. Y'all should not just, when you no longer find any sexual interest in us or value in us, decide to to devalue us with your goofy ass words as if we are second class citizens third class citizens or peasants he was literally talking to her as if she was the damn help and honestly i said that just because that's like a social term because the help is still people too and you need to treat them with goddamn respect like aq you could have took your ass right with rob with two b's who gets his ass ushered right the hell up out of um mexico in this episode the producer comes and said that they did a background check something came up and he got some business to handle maybe he got a case or something child i don't know but he needed to get his ass out regardless and shout out to the producers of the show who have been producing baby because once he dropped all them stupid ass bombs and caused all that mess they needed to get his ass up out of there so whether it's true or not that he has some legal things to deal with he needed to go because he didn't need to be able to enjoy this vacation with these people that he was literally just stirring up and mess with and being trifling i do not feel any sympathy for you being ushered off of y'all's little free vacation because you were being raggedy and i hate that for you on a happier note amanda gets the crew to throw rob a surprise birthday party and we love to see it that was so dope set the little vibe um pj and becky get to have a conversation in this episode and i'm like are y'all really feeling each other not y'all putting us through all that bullshit that y'all put us through only for y'all to wind up getting back together or getting back into a place of pursuing one another because this is where becky actually really want to be not 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 donnell jones and him becky but girl go with whatever your heart's desire honey and find your happiness and your peace and if it's gonna be pj then go ahead girl but make sure that y'all are very clear with each other from the jump because the way that your little heart has been getting broken and the way that you have been getting your ass eaten up online i want you to be able to learn grow and then still you know find love I do think that PJ is a very solid guy and he has definitely been growing on me as he's been allowing himself to be a little bit more vulnerable and a little bit more honest and open. So honestly, anybody ending up with him would be a good look because he, he, he just gives me dope dude. He has a ways to go still with vulnerability, but he's on a journey. He's going to get there and I'm excited to see that continue to play out now Kyle does seem like a really nice guy however I could see how um I could see how Becky might not really be into him she's trying to do the right thing which I appreciate but I also kind of in this episode would love for her to stop worrying so much about doing what's right per se and go with like what she feels and be honest and truthful with herself because i don't know like kyle is a nice guy but i don't know if she's actually feeling him or connected with him it could be something similar to like what's going on with becky and, i mean what's going on with um brie and pateri of like is this another guy who like really got his together and she's trying to figure it out and like you know at the legacy table event he was talking about marriage he, he's a very marriage minded person not that he asked her specifically but like he just knows what he wants out of life and if she's at a place where she's still trying to figure it out and he might be a little bit too far advanced for her then maybe she do need like a pj who was also in a place of still trying to figure it out making missteps kind of breaking her heart but you know sorry and, and you know willing to do better moving forward I don't know last episode I was like oh okay maybe PJ is really feeling Becky and then this one when they were talking I appreciate him being honest and like apologizing 
But then I also was like, is this something that the producers are putting him up to? So I guess only time will tell if he really, really, really got love for Becky the way that Brie is, is putting on, okay? And at the top of the episode, Thailand gives Gerald the damn apology that he been wanting. Actually, she gives him the apology that she's okay with giving him. And I'm, I'm not mad at it. I know that I told y'all that I didn't want her to apologize, but she apologized for how he hurts and not for saying it. And I will take it because she was 100% right in saying it. Um, however, as a person trying to pursue a friendship with him, she can apologize for how it hurt him. That is a great compromise if you ask me. And shout out to Thailand for thinking quickly on her feet. Because I'd have been still standing 10 toes down. Like, you ain't getting an apology out of me. But I also probably wouldn't have been pursuing a friendship with him. And we also don't have full clarity on, on what their friendship looked like aside from the show. They talk about how, you know, they've been friends for years. And they were really close. And they just know so much about each other. I would have loved to have more context of, like, how deep their friendship is before we got into the drama of last season. So that I could know. Because, honestly we don't see enough of Gerald to know that he's a really great person and a really great friend so another thing that I thought in reference to Tylen not giving him an apology I really kind of felt like Tylen wasn't losing anything not having him as a friend but if she feels like he's a good friend she feels like she actually do want him in her life then you know by all means girl we want whatever you want for yourself child now, the last but certainly not least thing, in this episode, we get to see the guys, um, Kellen, Jalen, and I don't know if it was Rob or PJ, Child, or Gerald. The two that matters are, are Kellen and Jalen. They talk about the conversations that they've been having with their girls and talking about marriage. Jalen is like, okay, I at the start of the conversation, I think I'm ready to, to propose. And these Negroes basically talk him out of it. And I'm just like, I hate this for you. Meanwhile, Kellen is talking about, oh, well, Candace hasn't been talking about any of this until she had a conversation with Thailand. Oh, funny. Funny how, you know, Jalen gets perspective from you, Kellen, and it's cool. But if Candace get perspective from Thailand, it's a problem. Make that make sense, sir. Too, like, I really just looked at the damn scene and I was like, look at all these goofy ass stooges. Like, that's gonna basically play themselves out of their damn blessings. I still cannot understand how do you validate in your mind that you're not ready for marriage, but you're ready to have a kid. That you're not ready for the commitment that marriage holds, but a baby with somebody is for the rest of your life and their life. Like, it's not just 18 years. When you have a kid with somebody, you are connected with this person forever. No courts can separate it. Like, that is what it is. And y'all want me to understand with y'all's conversation that, oh, marriage is completely out of the question to be talking about, but we could talk about babies and baby names? All you goofy niggas shut up, please, because I can't. And I've been trying to do better with using the N-word, but y'all are on my damn nerves. I am very disappointed in Kellen and Jalen and where they are within their relationships and how they're viewing their relationships and certain steps like I'm all for the conversation Kellen of like y'all have things to work on but honestly it sounds like you feel like Candace has things to work on you talking about it's God's time but it's really sounding like it's your time like what are are your action steps and your part of the plan of like the things that you're going to work to get to get y'all where y'all are trying to go because it all sounds like you're blaming her but then you also don't have a problem with getting her pregnant tomorrow and letting the chips fall where they may and i don't give a damn in 2022 girls have uh wising up women have wising up and we ain't falling for that shit no more and we ain't walking into it the hell same thing with you, Jalen. All of a sudden now, you not so sure about getting engaged because these little raggedy Negroes, and they just raggedy for the moment because they're not actually raggedy, y'all. But y'all, I'm just a little dramatic effect, a little razzle-dazzle, right? These little raggedy Negroes talk you out of now wanting to get engaged with her, but you still want to have a damn baby. So, like, you getting cold feet about the commitment of, like, saying I would want to live the rest of my life with you and, and do this with you, but you don't have a problem with saying that as a girlfriend and boyfriend and then getting her pregnant? Boy, shut up. Because y'all both sound stupid, honestly. Respectfully. You sound dumb. Patiri, what are you doing? Like, I'm gonna need you to make your rounds. I know that college your boy, and it looks like you kind of was kicking it with, with Gerald a little bit. But Gerald already 
very clear on Cheryl and they not having kids. He not trying to pressure her into having kids. It's so interesting because the Kellen and Jalen are like, yeah, I'm going to be pressured into getting married, but they don't have a problem with pressuring their women into having babies. It's like, do y'all get how goofy y'all sound? And I'm going to need Pateri to make his rounds and like rub off on the rest of these niggas. Rub off on the thirsty dudes. Rub off on the little misogynistic homie AQ who, who lost his good goddamn mind. Rub off on Jalen and, um, and Kellen who can't seem to decenter themselves within their relationship for a moment enough to be able to empathize and understand where their, where their female counterpart is and what they need. Maybe that's it. We did an episode where Pateri just makes his rounds and help all the men. I'm down for it. Like, I need to go ahead and tweet them, huh? Because what's good? <laughs> all right, y'all. That is my breakdown for episode number nine from season two of Sweet Life LA. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comment section down below. This episode was supposed to be wrapping up the Mexico trip. So the start of next episode um, we'll take them out of uh, Mexico and back to California and we're going to see where the chips fall. We're going to see where Patiri and Brianna land. Are y'all team Patiri and Bri or no? Let me know that and all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss out on any of my sweet life videos. Also, follow your good sis on your favorite social media site at ericavane.com, all spelled out it'll be linked in the description box down below so that you can find them very easily and i will see you in my next video bye